In this video I'm going to show you how to use the constant growth model to calculate uh, the price of a share of stock when you have dividends growing at a non-constant growth rate. And we're going to do this on the financial calculator and I'm going to try to show you an efficient way to do it on the financial calculator. So consider a situation where you have an initial dividend of two dollars that's already been paid and we expect those dividends to grow 30 percent between year zero and year one so in the first year it'll be 30 percent bigger, 25 percent bigger in year two, 15 percent bigger in year three and then starting in year four it's going to grow at six percent forever. In order to calculate the price right now we're going to need to calculate explicit projected dividends in years one, two, three, and four, and then calculate a horizon value in year four uh, as well, and then find the present value of all of that. So let's uh, look and see what that's going to look like. The dividends, we're going to calculate them, and I'll do them on the calculator in just a second and show you how to do this. The dividends will be 260, 325, 37375. There will be a horizon value calculation of 5659 as of year three. These two that have the arrow connecting them will be both cash flows in year three, dividends in year three, and we will find the present value of the sum of these, the 325 and the 260 back to time zero, and our end result is going to be $46.66. But the question is, is how do you do this efficiently on a financial calculator? Well, let's go ahead and see what you have to do. First thing, we need these dividends and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the memories store and recall 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. I'm going to put things in 1, 2, and 3 and then I'm going to use the cash flow register to calculate the net present value. There are a bunch of different ways you could do this but I think this is the most efficient for you. So start off with $2. That's our dividend 0. We need to grow it at 30 percent for the first year. So that's our 260 and I'm going to store that in memory one. And This is going to avoid you having to write down intermediate calculations and carry lots of decimal places and the potential for errors here. Now I'm going to multiply that. I got to grow it at 25 percent. So times 1.25. So that's the 325 that we have here. I'm going to store that in memory two just so that I have it there. I don't have to write it down again. I need to grow <clears throat> this at 15 percent and that's 3.7375. That's the dividend here at year three. I'm going to store that here so that I don't have to write it down and keep track of those decimal places. Now I also need to calculate the horizon value. The horizon value is going to be dividend four which is this 3.7375 grown up one more period at 6 percent. So there's dividend 4 right there divided by R minus G. So I'm going to calculate dividend 4 at 6 percent. Uh, and then I need to divide that by R minus G. So I need to divide that by 13 percent minus 6 percent or 0 0.07. And that's the 56.59. That's the horizon value of dividend four, five, six, seven, eight, I need to add to that the dividend in year three to get the total cash flow in year three, and I'm going to store that in year three. Now let's just look and see what's in the memories just to see what we've got here. Second mem will tell, let us look. Uh, nothing in slot zero, 2.6 in slot one, 2.3.25 uh, in slot two, and 60.33, which is the sum of the 56.59 and the 37.375 uh, in slot three. There's nothing else, but it doesn't matter about the other ones. Now, let's use the cash flow registers to uh, to do the present value. You don't have to use the cash flow registers to do it. You could find the present value of the 260, the present value of the 325, the present value of that 6033, add those all together, and that would work just as well. Uh, require more calculation, more keystrokes. This is, I think, the smallest number of keystrokes for you. All right, so cash flow zero, we don't have a cash flow zero because that $2 is water under the bridge. If you included it, it would be wrong. Oops, let me get rid of everything so that we can put them in second clear work. All right cash flow one is going to be this 260. 
All right, so the 260, we saved that in space one. So I'm going to recall one, and I'm going to enter that. Frequency one is one. Cash flow two is the 325, which is in memory slot two. I'm going to enter that. Cash flow three is 3.7375 plus 56.59. That's the 60, 60, 60, 33. And so I'm going to recall that out of, out of memory slot three. I'm going to enter that. And just to make sure everything's the way it ought to be, this is the nice thing about the cash flow register. Let's just look through it. 2.6, that's cash flow one. 3.25, that's cash flow two. Uh, 6033, that's cash flow three. Nothing in cash flow four, frequency four. Okay, so everything's good. Now I want to calculate the net present value. Our interest rate is 13%. Enter that. And now I'm press down arrow to get to the NPV part. I need to compute the NPV. I have to hit compute. And that gives me my 4666. So it's really not all that many keystrokes in order to do this calculation. And especially if you are careful uh, using memory slots, you don't have to transfer information uh, to your to your piece of paper and then then run the risk of mistranscribing the numbers.